As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing. Welcome to another 3 ABN Today program. Thank you for joining us as you do each and every day. And today we have, uh, of course, I have my wife Yvonne here. We've got Sister Shelley Quinn and Greg and Jill Morricone. And uh, today it's a special program. And this was uh, one that's going to be really hard to do, but in some ways it, it's, we, we want to do it. But mm, it's a right. tribute to Sister Molly Steenson mm. that we lost. Uh, I guess uh, October 22nd, mm -hmm. and uh, so what an incredible woman of God, and uh, we've known Molly for so many years, you know, well over 40 years, I guess, wow. and, and so it's just, today we wanted to talk about that, and because Molly has influenced so many people, mm -hmm. and I can say about her like I did uh, Dr. Thompson and, and uh, Mae Chung and a few others, if I had to count the people that's had the biggest impact on me and that I looked up to spiritually that I've ever met in all my life on, on the four fingers and two thumbs, Molly would be on <laughs> one of those and probably on hand one. Wow. Um, because yeah. that's what I've seen, the consistency yeah. of a woman who loves God and who has matured, continued to mature spiritually. I first met her and I said, man, this woman, she's just, and you just watch it grow year after mm, year yes. and you watch her in mm. every kind of situation. So today it's, a, it's kind of a special, hmm. today we would tribute to, to Molly, but uh, for Hal and, you know, uh, the, the, the children, for Dee Dee, I mean, it's... Uh, mm -hmm. And Jeremy. Yeah, Dee Dee and Jeremy, this is something that we want them to have and maybe to keep and give to their kids and yeah. what have you, should the Lord tarry. But um, I think before we get too far involved, we're going to play a song. It's Hallelujah, We're mm -hmm. Home at Last. Oh. And, mm, wow. Now, we believe, and according to the Bible, that Molly's now sleeping in Jesus. She's, she's resting, yeah. waiting for the trumpet to sound. Amen. And uh, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain, it says, shall be caught up together in the air, yes. you know, with the Lord yes. in the air. That, that's an that's amazing thing. Mm -hmm. So Molly, we know, is sleeping. She's safe in the arms of Jesus in that respect, that God has protected her. There's a protective head. Devil can't do anything to her anymore. Amen. Can't tempt her can't get, cause her pain, can't do anything. She's just resting. And it's like a fleeting moment. You shut mm -hmm. your eyes in death. There's no conception of time yeah. in death. And you wake up in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But this song that Yvonne and I wrote some time ago, it's Hallelujah, We're Home at Last. And it just talks a little bit from heaven's perspective. Mm. I was thinking one night from heaven's perspective, we always talk about Jesus coming and looking up, but I thought, how about him getting ready mm. to come back to this earth? Heaven must be in a bustle, everything. <laughs> wow, it'd be exciting to see that end, and we'll have time to hear about it, you know, in eternity. Amen. So we kind of put this together, and I called Yvonne, and she had written a chorus. I had some verses, and literally we had to do away with one or two of the lines because the same thing, and, and we, we didn't even know that the other was writing this, so we put them together with the help of Larry Goss and the, came out with this song, Hallelujah, We're Home at Last. And praise God, Hallelujah, Home at Last. Reggie and Lady.
there's excitement in heaven like there's never been before. Jesus stands up, heaven is changed forevermore and more. Angels around the Savior to escort the Son of Man. He returns to earth victorious. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you. Absolutely. Reggie wow. and Lady Love Smith, uh, what an incredible Ooh. duo they are together. Yes. And I'm glad they're in the Lord's Army, aren't hey, you? Amen. Me <laughs> too. It'd be, it'd be tough if they were out in the world, but they're such incredible Christian people and they love Jesus amen. so much. And we were talking about, of course, this is a tribute to Molly Sue Steenson. And I've called her Molly Sue for since old Shep was a pup, I guess, <laughs> yeah. a long time. That's her name, but I always got in the habit of, of it. But um, I saw Molly, she was there while we take yep. that. She was yeah. in there singing. Now, she always said she wasn't much of a singer. We don't know for sure because we didn't have her mic very loud. Yeah. <laughs> That's at her she beckoning. Wasn't. That was her <laughs> beckoning saying, now don't turn my mic, mic on uh, yeah. and I'll just, but uh, she was there as part of it. We're going to kind of go around and just talk a little bit. Uh, sure. Molly, the, the impression, mm. you guys, when you first, Greg, you, yep. you met her, your position here, Jill, you know, and then how your relationship grew over the years. I want to just go back and comment on the song. Thank you for writing it, because what a powerful song. Yes. You know, and as we're sitting here on the set watching it, and I'm sure you at home, I mean, wow, what a day that will be. Oh. Yeah. No more sickness, no more death, no more right. suffering. You know, you think about this year with COVID and everything, Mr. Danny, I mean, there's yes. a lot of people that have oh, suffered my. in tremendous ways. Yeah. You know, I think of Molly and, um, you know, she was such a fighter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, cancer, you know, she fought cancer for a number of years. and. Mm -hmm. Wow, to think of her not being in pain anymore, praise the Lord, but still we've got that tremendous loss that we're That's all right. dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I, I think when I first came to 3ABN, she kind of became my 3ABN mother. Okay. You know, I was just here trying to find my way. I hadn't, we'd met, of course, but we weren't <laughs> married, uh, Jill and I, so I came here as a single young man, and she kind of just took me in under her wing. I worked in production when I first started. But uh, then I transitioned to the call center, and uh, I'll never forget uh, Molly and just her way. She's kind of like... This is hopefully taken the right way, like a Southern Belle. She's yeah. mm -hmm. so gracious, yeah, hospitable, absolutely. just her hospitality. And mm -hmm. just like she, like I see there's a mother hen and all her little kids. Yeah. 
you know, and she was so protective of 3ABN, you know, always, mm -hmm. and that was just fantastic. But when I transitioned to the call center manager, I remember Molly, she just called me up and uh, says, Greg, this is, I love how 3ABN operates. I know she'd been in contact with you. Mm -hmm. But she said, Greg, she said, do you have uh, the master key to the call center? And I said, well, <laughs> actually, I do, Molly. She said, good. She says, uh, you're the one in charge there right now. Just make sure you lock up at the end of the day. Like, okay. <laughs> But she threw the little yeah. word in there. She said temporary. I you, said, okay. You had been at the print shop then. I had been in the print you shop. Were not the call no, I manager. wasn't the call center manager. I was supervisor of our little print shop at the time. And so then corporate worship comes around because we have corporate worship, you know, every week here at 3 ABM. And so the next, um, I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday, however, we did corporate worship. And uh, she announced to the entire group there, she says, I want you to meet our new call center manager, Greg Marconi. <laughs> and that was the first I heard of it. <laughs> but, I, you know, just Molly, she was just so great. And then she would call me and she says, Greg, just let you know. She said, this is just temporary. Just need someone to kind of fill in. Temporary became like 10 years. But during the call, <laughs> during the, during the call center years is when I really got close to Molly because I was really trying to find my way. You know, I'd never managed before. And having the number of the call center staff, which we had about 20 at the time, it was great fun and so much wisdom, so much insight. She would call me into her office and say, now, honey, that was a mistake. You've learned from it. Just don't do it again. <laughs> I say, OK, Molly, I got it. I got it. I have got it. You know, at the same time, though, she was she would just um, shoot straight. You knew exactly where she stood. And she would say, Greg, your tunnel vision to the call center, which is good. But Greg, think big picture. 3 a is much bigger than the call center, so this decision here is big picture. Oh, okay, Molly, I got it. Just so much wisdom that she would just, oh, pour into us, we would mention. She and Pastor Hal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm talking a lot, but I, and I remember when we first got married then, and uh, Pastor Hal and her would speak to us and say, Greg and Jill, protect your marriage. Protect yeah. your marriage. Yeah. Never get busy, too busy for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and they would just pour in then the couple stuff to mm. us as well. Just, oh man, what a loss. You, what a you loss. know, Greg, I don't know if I ever told you this okay. or not, but I don't know how long you'd been here, if it'd been a year or two years. She was, something came up. I don't know what it was. She said, Danny, you know how she looked? You straight down. <laughs> I know. Danny, you better listen. And if I don't listen, sometimes mm. she'll go, Danny Shelton? Like that. She'd say, <laughs> yes. Danny Shelton? And I'd say, yes, ma'am. Like yes. that, you know. I'd say, sometimes I'd even do this. I'd say, yes, ma'am. She said, that Greg's got something. Oh, I said, no, I never, well, Greg, I she know. said, Greg Morricone. He's got some. Wow. She says, now that. what are you going to do with him? She goes, what are you, you going to do with him? I said, I don't know. That's up to you. I said, I said wow. that's up to you. And she says, you know what I'm talking about? I said, yeah, I do. I automatically know what. She says, he's sincere. He's honest as day is long. She said, he loves Jesus. She said, we need to, we need to just let him. She said, we just need to love him and just, just you know. Wow. And I said, support him. She said, oh, well, we already support him. But, you know, and I forget her words, but. Basically, let's grow him in this wow. ministry. I and never knew say that. that. Oh, yeah, I she said, that. Yeah, Greg, wow. she said, he's got something wow. like that. You know, only the way Molly could say I it. know, yeah. Then she'd say, do you know what I mean? I said, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I got it. Well, wow. what do you want to do with it? I said, well, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> well, she nurtured, nurtured me. I never knew that yeah, yeah, until now. That's, but, and, wow. and, and when you said, well, I'm sure she asked you, she may have run it by me, but I, oh, yeah. I just said, mm -hmm. well, do whatever, whatever you think's best. She goes, okay. She says, she says, Boy, so then when it came time for the call center, I said, what are, what are we going to do? She goes, well, it's obvious, you know, Greg. So I, I said, sure, whatever you want. So then she just broke it to you. <laughs> you know, Mr. Dan, I'm going to mention this too, because I don't want to toot any, you know, anyone's horn on this, but I'm just, you know, a couple, well, it was a year or so ago when we did the transition, you know, mm -hmm. first from you to me. And, and, uh, and she was there on the stage. And afterwards, she had tears in her eyes, and she gave me a great big hug. And she, great, she said, Greg, I always want to be here for this day. Yeah. She knew it was coming. Yeah, from way back, she could see that. That's the thing about her. She wasn't looking for the moment. He's, uh, Greg, he's got something, she mm -hmm. said. That meant, you know, 20 years. be here long term. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's work with him. Well, oh, she you... worked with me 20 years, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, precious, yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Great yeah. Great lady, great lady. Uh, yeah. Sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> um, scripture I just turned to reminds me of Molly. Mm. And then I'll share a few memories. This is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 2. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, mm. ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. 
mm. on tablets of stone not but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart and when I think of Molly mm. Molly's life mm. her character her example was as a letter written known and read of all people oh, that's great because it wasn't just what she said on the set it wasn't what she preached it was how Molly lived Amen. Mm -hmm. how Molly lived was a Christian she mm -hmm. was a woman of faith. She was a woman of prayer, a woman of God. She had great dignity and grace. Oh, oh, yeah. I remember watching her walk down the hall, her <laughs> back always very straight, just walk down the hall. And I used to be very intimidated by Molly when I first came. She was one of those people who really intimidated me because she had this aura of grace and mm. dignity. And yes. she was very... Um, a Southern Belle, just very um, gracious. And I remember just feeling a little, but sometimes she could be a little short, not short as in um, unkind, but direct. just clipped, direct. That's the word. She can be direct. Mm -hmm. Business, say some Business, very, sometimes. Very, very, very. And she'd say, Jill Morricone, I need to see you in my office. And I'd go, oh, what did I do? What did I do? Yeah, that was that, always that scary. Stress, <laughs> you know, but yet she never meant anything. She was just very direct. And and she said that to me. <laughs> you come to my office, Danny Shelton. I need to see my office. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I was like, what have I done? So when we first got married, I worked for Molly for the first six months, and then I transitioned to the school and then came back. And I remember in that time, um, when I was over at the school, toward the end of that time, uh, we had really prayed. I just felt in my heart, you know, supposed to be back at the ministry here. I was just pulled to the vision and the, you know, spreading the gospel to the world and what was happening here. And Greg and I prayed about it. And it said, well, if someone asks, then I'll come back and work at 3 p.m. And so we prayed for two years. And during those two years, I did the work at the school and I loved it, but I just kept feeling I'm supposed to be at 3 a.m., but I don't know why I'm supposed to be back at 3 a.m., you know, working. I was always volunteering, but working. Mm -hmm. And then two years later, I was in Molly's office and she kind of leaned across the desk, you know, mm -hmm. how she would, and she oh, put yeah. her fingertips together. <laughs> and she'd say, Miss Jill, you know, my dream for this ministry is that you sit in my chair. Mm -hmm. And she said, but I know you're going to tell me no. And I said, actually, I'm going to tell you yes. Because <laughs> she didn't know. I said, we've been praying about it. Okay. And we knew. And she said, okay, then you have a job at this ministry. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah. right. I just think about hmm. the cancer that she walked through. Mm -hmm. And yet she would come in the office and we'd never know. She'd been for treatment. And she'd oh. go in treatment, right. come back into the office. And um, I think about the things that she endured and she encountered, and yet every day she walked in grace, and every day she mm -hmm. poured out love to other people, and every day you'd never know what sh went on. She was always the same, mm -hmm. always kind, always grace, and always uplifting. She was never up one day and down the next. She was always consistent. And you can never compliment her either because she That's deflected yeah. that, you know. She always sure. would change the subject or give God the praise, you know, but she never wanted some people like to hear, oh, really? Yeah. What else? You know, not her. She would just cut down. We say get to the brass tacks, you know. She'd just get right at it. But uh, I think of her so often as she's one of the strongest people I've ever met in my That's life. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. strong in that you said she could go do treatments, and could be feeling terrible. She wanted to come back to work. That's right. How you doing, Molly? I'm fine. You know, <laughs> said, I'm fine. You know, and I'd say, Molly, say, how you doing? She said, Mr. Shelton, I'm fine. So that meant, okay, don't ask any more <laughs> questions. <laughs> you know, of course, with, with, with love, it's not like she, no. we want to no. come across. We see her as strong, but one of the most loving people yes. in the entire world. Yes. And um, so I remember one time when someone had owed us a lot of money. We struggled to pay our satellite time and all of this this number of years ago. And they owed, they, they came here and did productions. We did all the productions. They were supposed to pay airtime so we could pay the satellite companies. Mm -hmm. But they just got behind and got farther behind. And it ended up being about $35,000. So accounting would bill them and say, you know, we really need this money because we need to pay our bills too, we're having to front this money that we don't really have. And the person just said, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't have it now. And things are just really, you know, I don't know what to do. So one day I, I, Molly and I were talking about it. 
So I said, well, Molly, I said, write, write them a letter. I said, because the county said, well, maybe if you did it. I said, just write them a letter for me. And she would always say, what is it you want? So she would dictate my letter. And she could do shorthand, too, which mm -hmm. yeah, was very she fast. Did. She'd dictate my letter. But a lot of times didn't sound hardly like me at all. So I would say, Molly, and she said, well, I know what you said, but I know you wouldn't really write that. So I just kind of <laughs> corrected it for you. So when yeah. I'd listen back, I'd say, yeah, that's much yeah, more yeah, loving. Yeah. That's much, much more kind. So this day I said, well, go ahead and write them a letter. And I said, just tell them we have to have the money. So she said, okay. So I left, for as I knew, I came in, did a program. For as I knew, she was writing this letter. I came back out. I said, Molly, did you get that letter? Yeah. I said, uh, you want me to sign it? Sure, she said. And she handed me this big sheet of paper, and it said one word, forgiven. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Forgiven. Powerful. And I looked at her, and I said, what? She goes, well, that's what you want. And I said, what do you mean that's what I want, Molly? I said, we need the money. She said, I know you do, but when it comes right down to it, I know you. She said, and so? I, she said, you always tell me, just write what you think I would say. So she said, in your heart, that's what you want to say, isn't it? I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> that's it. So that's wow. what we sent. We sent one, one word, forgiven. Mm -mm. So about six weeks later, a person called me from the south and said, is it true that this person owed you, you know, $35,000? Well, I wasn't going to tell. And I thought, who told? And I said, well, I really want, don't want to discuss this. And they said, well, uh, we can tell you who, who told us. I said, who? And they said, the person that <laughs> owed you the money and said you forgave it. And I said, well, yeah, in, in a sense, our, our leadership team did because, you know, that was without Molly. I wouldn't. Yeah. So they said, well, we wanted, to just, we wanted to make sure that was true. And I said, it's true. And they said, well, that was so nice, so kind of you to do that. I'm sending you a check today to 50, for 50000 to cover it. Wow. So oh, by forgiving Lord, 35 amazing? You gained you 15 And I looked at Molly, and she goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, that Molly, is so can Molly. you believe it? And yeah. she goes, yeah. Wow. You know, that's it. <laughs> so, oh, the Lord. What oh, a lady. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do we want to go to the video first, and then maybe Shelly, we're going to come back and uh, talk to you. So we have a little video. Tell us about the clip. Oh, yeah, so this is a, a neat little role that was put together again by uh, Brad Walker, which we appreciate yes. very much. And the script was written by um, uh, Bobby, Bobby Davis, Bobby Davis yes. longtime friend, of course, of Molly and Hal. And uh, this is just a, a tribute video that uh, we actually put together uh, for Molly. We added a, a couple things to it, and we actually sent it to um, Miss Molly and to Pastor Hal um, yes. a number of months before she actually passed, because a lot of times when people pass, then at the funeral memorial, we're always talking about all these things. But we just yeah. wanted to share with Molly how much we appreciated her, how much she meant to us and to you at home. So this is the role that uh, we gave to her. Molly, as we think back on the many years we've known you and how, we are amazed as we think about how God brought you to Southern Illinois and made sure that you came in contact with Danny Shelton. Before the beginning of time, God planned for you and Hal to be an important part of Three Angels Broadcasting Network's ministry. So much so that it's hard to think of 3ABN starting up without you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, O God, and even know my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us mm -hmm. have thoughts we don't want <clears throat> God to know. Mm -hmm. And that word try is the same word that's over in 1 Peter where it says that our tried faith is going to be tried as gold, mm -hmm. tried by fire. And how's gold tried in fire? The heat gets turned up hotter mm -hmm. and hotter. Mm -hmm. What comes to the surface? <clears throat> the dross. The dross. Yeah. In your heart, that's where the problem is. It doesn't matter who did it. It doesn't matter who's at fault. It just doesn't matter. What matters is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And if this thing is separating you from God, which it is, then you get rid of it because God's looking at your heart and He's bringing the dross to the surface and then God is not the one that skims it off. You know who has to do that? Mm -hmm. The Word says, mm -hmm. He that hath this hope purifieth Purify himself. himself. Mm -hmm. So himself. we have to do it ourselves. And in this case, honey, you just may have to by faith, ask God to help you forgive because that might really have been a hard thing that happened to you. But you walk in forgiveness for the sake of yourself. 
From the moment God impressed you to move to Southern Illinois, to Hal's offer to donate your cameras to this ministry, all the way to when you both joined us in this work, God's perfect will has unfolded and you've endeared yourselves in our hearts. How well some of us remember those early days, Molly, when you worked at a tiny desk in the corner of our mailroom. How quickly your personality, your smile, and your willingness to serve in any capacity gained the respect and love of all of those who worked with you. As Danny has said, Hal and Molly joining this ministry is one of the greatest blessings we've ever had. And Molly, we cannot tell you how much we've appreciated the love and the good counsel that you've poured into us. Your advice has always been based on principles Christ taught his disciples, and you've reflected his love to everyone who sees you. How we've loved your wisdom and encouragement. You've mothered and mentored so many who now rise up to call you blessed. We have many wonderful memories of you, from leading us in corporate worship to all those 3ABN Today programs through the years. There were the countless news breaks you did that kept our worldwide audience informed. And who could forget your wonderful insights and clear teaching on the 3ABN Sabbath School panel? How precious those memories are to all of us. In the best of times and the worst of times, you've carried yourself as a gracious and dignified lady, full of wisdom, integrity, and loyalty. Your fairness in dealing with difficult situations is legendary, and you've been a powerful example of what it's like to live for Jesus and serve Him in any way you can. God's grace shows through you, and all those who have worked with you will attest that you have extended that grace to us. Molly, God has bonded our hearts together as we've laughed and cried and fussed with each other, as you like to put it. You truly lifted up Danny's hands, and as you were stretched into new and difficult positions, God always gave you the grace to handle every situation with wisdom. We love you, we miss you, and we pray that God's mighty hand will continue to sustain. We cannot wait to spend eternity with you and with him. So may God wrap his powerful arms of love around you and keep you until then. Wow. Mm. Mm. Amen. Wow. You know, seeing all those pictures and it just <laughs> literally brings back so many memories of, A lot of for so many years. Yeah. I remember Ivana, it was about 1978, maybe 1979. Yeah. Mike Adkins, I grew up with Mike in West Frankfurt. He was singing and traveling all over the country and co-hosting with PTL at the time club, you know, Jim and Tammy. And so, um, he told me he had hired a new, new a secretary slash kind of his manager, but a lady for run his office. Mm -hmm. So my brother and I, Kenny, we were contractors. So we built a building he had concrete on, but we put a roof, all the trusses and roofed it in. And I, one day I went into office and I met this Southern Bell we've been talking about, mm -hmm. Molly, and then I met Brother Hal. Wow. Brother Hal was a pastor. And so a charismatic pastor and, and Molly was also a pastor. And so they came to Southern Illinois. Well, Molly told me the story later. I said, how'd you end up here? Yeah. They were in uh, Florida at the time, actually, at a big <laughs> church there. And uh, he was, uh, I think, a co-pastor or something of a large church. I think it's Lake City or Lakeland, maybe it's Lakeland. So anyway, they came, came up here. And so uh, Molly said, we interviewed with Mike and went is winter time went through downtown West Frankfurt. Of course, they've been from Florida. Yeah. No flowers, everything's <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah, winter they time. Said, we're oh, getting in. Boy. We we loved the ministry and loved yeah. the idea. But as we left town, we said, "This is kind of ugly." And and Hal said, "I smell sulfur from those coal mines." He said, I would, "That's just. I don't want to. I don't think we want to move here." To you, and Molly said, "No, not really. I mean, I like the ministry and everything, but no." So he said, "We get on Interstate 57. We start heading south." We don't even get to Johnson City and Molly's sniveling over here, you know, like this. And he is too. He said, we both got tears running down our eyes. And wow. we look at each other and say, we have to move there, don't we? <laughs> and she, he said at the wow. same time, we both said, yeah, we do. Go to the next exit and turn back around and tell, tell him we want to we move there. 
And that was my first experience, first meeting. And Molly was always so gracious. And Hal, uh, he and I, so I would do work for them inside. They were finished in the building. Well, he always wanted to get me speaking tongues. So he was always talking to me about speaking in tongues. So I always talked to him about the Sabbath. So we would have all these meetings where we're building together and we loved each other, you know. And uh, so we'd have all these conversations and we'd talk about the state of the dead. Oh, they're in heaven. Oh, no, they're wow. not. They're sleeping in the grave. You know, we'd talk about eating. We'd talk about, about everything you can think of and didn't agree on a lot. We agreed on salvation, which was the most important, but we had a lot of these. But you know, it never came in between a friendship. Amen. We loved each other. Yep. We could talk openly and directly with Brother Hal. And so finally at one point after a number of years, Brother Hal said, man, it, it hit me. It hit me. This seventh day Sabbath, why haven't I seen it all this time? I've got, to, we have to start keeping the Sabbath. So he told me, if you come out Wednesday night, I'm going to be preaching about it to my congregation. He had a big congregation. So hmm. I'm going to be preaching about it. So May Chung was here Wednesday night. We showed up and there was hundreds of people on a Wednesday night. Hmm. So she and I just sat in the back. We didn't see us. So Brother Hal started in about, you know, why didn't Columbus come discover America in a 747? And everybody laughed, you know. He said, I'm not being funny. Why didn't Columbus discover America in a 747? People were quieter. And he said, he said well, the, the, the laws of aviation were aer aerodynamics yeah. was in effect sure. all of those years, but they didn't take advantage of it. Yeah. He said, the Ten Commandments have been in effect since the beginning, but we haven't taken advantage of them, just nine. Mm -hmm. He said, why be cheated? We're going we're gonna to keep all 10 of them here. So people didn't know what to think. Well, after that, there were some problems. So one day, Molly said, can I talk to you? And you know how she can, oh, can yes. I talk to you? I said, yes. <laughs> yes. So she goes, I, I, I can see what you're saying about the Sabbath. Now, how sold on it? But she said, I'm the one that's paying all the bills. So she says, she says, I'm paying all the bills. And she said, we've lost a number of couples. And, and she said, don't you think it's okay that maybe we should do it like putting on braces? I tell Hal, you put on just a little at a time. Why don't you do that? And she said, no, Hal won't do that. So he, he said, I can't now that it's truth. Sure. Well, Molly, then within a matter of weeks, she was up there preaching. So we had her back as far as I think we just saw that video a while ago. 80s, yeah. 8, 89. Mm -hmm. She was on 3 ABN preaching about the seventh day Sabbath. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Still had the charismatic church for a number of years. Then we had some evangelistic mm -hmm. series here in 99, I think it was. Yes. Around 2000, she and Hal both were baptized in the seventh day Adventist church. Amen. But incredible people. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, I mean, the world is not the same. My life no. is totally different because of them. So, Brother Hal, thank you. And, and, uh, you know, Sister Molly is just mm -hmm. incredible. What Shelley, you, you, you've got, uh, you, and you, you both came from this kind of same background, charismatic or well, background I, or Pentecostal or some, whatever it was, but you guys I, I won't consider myself of a Pentecostal background, but I yeah. did come from a full gospel. Mm -hmm. When I met Molly, it was 2002 at ASI. Oh, wow. And uh, I was brand new. Adventist, and then you had me up on the ASI stage that night because I talked with you. But we talked a little bit, and then you all invited me up for the Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve program. And Molly and I sat down and talked, and you know, there are some times that you just meet somebody that you bond with immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we bonded in mm -hmm. such a special way. And I know that I came up a few months later when you had your camp meeting. Uh, I stayed at her home. And Dean commented to me. She said, I've never seen Molly get this close to anybody before. Mm -hmm. So you all knew her as Southern Belle. I knew her as Southern Sass. <laughs> 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 I mean, Molly was so much fun. And we had yeah. that. She had great humor. We had that in common. I mean, mm -hmm. we had similar, mm -hmm. everything. Really, we shared so much in common except shopping. She did not want to go shopping with me because I'm like a laser beam. I shop like a man. I'm in and out. And Molly loved to <laughs> shop. But, um, you know, we took vacations together. We... Uh, she was my sister yeah. in every sense of the word. And I know that, you know, she'd tell me that she, she told me things she'd never told anybody in her life. Mm -hmm. And we had that kind of relationship. Yeah. But I think 
I, ne I had totally forgotten this till you were talking about what she said to you. You know, Molly had a way of, I remember when, when we came up here, um, she called me and said, God told me J.D. is supposed to be in the pastoral department. And I said, wow. mm -hmm. you'll have to tell him that. <laughs> she said, well, have him call me. And I called him. And he said, well, I'm not really an indoor person. And uh, I said, mm -hmm. honey, God won't have you do anything that you don't want to do. And so if you don't want to do this, fine. And boy, just as I'm saying this, it was in my mind, who is this that darkens my counsel mm. wow. with words without wisdom? Man, I shut my mouth and I said, you better pray about this. Mm. He prayed, he called. And so y'all actually, she called and asked JD to work here first. And I said, well, do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, of wow. course. But what she told me, you know, I told her she had a good teaching gift. Oh, yes. And she yeah. told me something one day. She said, Shelly, it's different. She said, yeah, I've got the gift of teaching. But she said, you've been called as a, in the sevenfold ministry as a teacher mm -hmm. to the body of Christ. She said, I teach what somebody else puts together. And she said, God shows you a lot of things. But she had this way about her of, uh, you know, the day that um, she was in a car accident, and, yeah. and that was 2013. Hmm. And we'd had lunch together, and we'd met there because J.D. and I were doing a, hosting a program. So she and Hal went, and we had lunch. I was so blessed to get to work with my best friend every yeah, day. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. And we had lunch together every day. But... We were supposed to be in the car with them because we were meeting there. We we're going to go drive on to John Hauser's. He had had open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. And so they were in the accident and we were just a few miles up the road because what happened instead of going with him, they called from 3ABN and said, can you come host a program? So-and-so can't host. So we turned around and when we got the call, we... Uh, uh, it was Hal that called. He said, we've been in an accident. So we zipped back and they had everything closed off. And JD just flashed his pastoral credentials. And he said, we're, past we're their pastor. <laughs> and we did. We pastored them. But anyway, <laughs> so we got there and they were down in a ravine. I mean, a, a mm. deep ravine. Mm. I jumped out of the car and I went running down there and these cops were saying, you can't go down there, you can't go down there. And I mean, I was up to my ankles. They were bringing Hal up and I was up to my ankles in mud and I got down there and I kept saying, that's my sister, yeah. that's my sister. Yeah. And so they air flighted them then to uh, up to St. Louis. And I remember that we were there, we stayed, we got Jeremy and took him up there and we stayed there several days. But I was in the room when the doctor walked in and he said, there's no, no breaks in your neck. But he said, there's, exist he said, there's lesions. They look like existing lesions. Well, everybody's hallelujah. And I had to leave the room. I just knew what it was. Mm. And so we went out to Loma Linda together mm -hmm. and I've never seen as you said, anybody that had the grace and the grit, but a lot of it was Molly didn't want to be pitied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Molly right. didn't right. like pity, and she just right. wanted to put forward that strong face. But I praise God that, you know, Isaiah 57, verse 1, I think it is, says that the righteous are taken from us, mm. and we don't ask why, and it's because the Lord is taking them away from evil to spare them from evil. Mm -hmm. And it, grief is so disorienting. It yeah. seems like, it seems like forever now. I mean, at first it was so unreal, but now it seems like forever that she's been gone. You know, mm -hmm. at first it wasn't real, but from weeks to forever, you know, I know it's just yeah. amazing. But I do we, know we knew we couldn't. I don't think we'd gotten through a program a few weeks oh, ago. So we had to prepare. No. And no. why we 
you know, one of the reasons we put it mm -hmm. off for a while you, is... You know, I just want to say one thing and then I'll quit because I'm around. I don't know what I'm saying, but I do know that the last few weeks of her life were horrible. And I was in that anticipatory stage of yeah. grace, you know, knowing. So I was grieving so much before she died. And when she died, it was like she had such a special room in my heart. Yeah. And when she died, it was like the light went off in that room, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and you just feel like there was such a darkness, there's mm. such a heaviness. Mm -hmm. But I know that already mm. God is, is turning on the light and just to show us a gallery of mm. wonderful memories. You know, I think every day mm. of something cute that we did together. Mm. And um, I'm just a very blessed person to have had her mm. for Absolutely. such a good friend. Absolutely. Oh. Yvonne? Wow. So I came here <laughs> in 2010. It's all right, Shell. Mm. It's okay. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's all right. Oh, no. So I came here in 2010, and I really didn't know what to expect mm -hmm. because I had not worked in, a, in an all-Christian environment. Yeah. Yeah. I had basically worked for myself for... Um, many years so I really didn't know what to expect and I met Molly and we were both kind of dry with each other. <laughs> I have to say, I know she was, I know she was and I was like she's acting kind of dry with me so I just gave it back because that's just you know but that's, that was the flesh I admit. So we just kind of we, we just didn't really I guess know how to take each other. We were cordial but there was this kind of a wall. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I was thinking about this. I don't know when it turned, mm. but it went from us being like this to being like this wow. because we, she saw your heart. Oh yeah. 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 You know, something, I, I remember the day that it was, she called me into her office and she said, I've seen her heart. She's a good woman. She said Aww. she's a genuine Christian because she was just checking you out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'd I mean, actually I been understand. very protective. Yeah, she yeah. was. Yeah, <laughs> me for one. Yeah, because yeah. right. she was at the time, and you know, right. so she's making protective. Okay, if somebody's coming here, I want to make sure it's yeah. the right reason. Yeah. And this is going to be, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know. So she was just, just, just I and you, and you were I and her. Oh, I and her. But and actually, I appreciated the fact that she was real with me. Yeah. Like she yeah. wasn't fake with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was very real, but kind, but just like the wall. I felt the wall. <laughs> and I think I gave the wall back a bit because I was getting that. And so we were just kind of giving it back and forth. But then I think we both saw each other. Like the two words that when I think of Molly, I think of elegance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good and word. I think of dignity. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And through her trials and through the pain and through the, the, the health challenges, she, she didn't want pity. No. She would talk to me about some things and, you know, I'd make some suggestions or whatever. And she just, she was so strong in the Lord yeah. mm -hmm. that you just couldn't help but admire Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet she was fun and she oh, was yeah. funny. Oh, she was a hoot. And I got to know her and she got to know me. And I'm so thankful that the Lord put us in each other's life yeah. paths mm -hmm. because, um, you know, mm -hmm. the walls came tumbling down and we became sisters. Yeah. She, <laughs> so it was a blessing. She said to me at one point, I don't know how long Yvonne had been here, but she called me in. Yeah, as she can do. So I sit down and I'd always say, am I in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> am I in trouble? She said, no. No. She said, um, Yvonne's a woman you need to marry. You know, she could do it so straight <laughs> yes. and just okay. so serious. Like, what? You're just going to throw that out? She goes, Yvonne's a woman you need to marry. And I said, I do? I said, why? How do you know? Of course, I already knew that in my mind, but yeah. I wanted to hear what she said. How, how do you know? And she goes, 
Well, because she said, the Lord, this is, this is meant. She said, this is meant for the both of you. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, but see, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, she is. had discernment. She mm -hmm. knew that mm -hmm. you were, she wanted you to be president. She knew you should be sitting in her seat. She knew you should be his <laughs> wife. Molly had, she knew J.D. should, should be, be in pastoral. pastoral. She yeah. did. Mm -hmm. She yeah. had a very amazing gift mm -hmm. of yeah. discernment. She did. She did. She did. I'm going to make a confession right now. I've had people over the years, and, and still people will say, man, it's amazing that you can manage something like that, and you started from nothing, and, and 3ABN's been such a success, and you know, you're able to keep going and pay all the bills and do all of this. And I always have to say, that's really just hiring the right people. In other <laughs> words, you put yourself around people that's who are more point. qualified than you are. Mm. And so it's not really hard to do. Like me, I'm not qualified to do all that stuff. Mm. Molly came. I'm yeah. telling you, the last 20 some years before Jill, when Molly was here, there's no telling this place would have been a mess because she organized everything. She did. Everything yeah. is she organized. Did. Yeah. My schedule, if I wasn't in when right when I should, Mr. Shelton, you're supposed to be over here in five <laughs> minutes for a program. <laughs> I'd say, yes, ma'am. So I'd, I'd hang up, get over here. But she was so organized, incredible. Mm -hmm. And she did a, and you, you have that same gift, Jill. She and does. so mentoring you, Jill is the same, I mean, everything. There's nothing out of place. The same cloth. Aren't they do. Yeah, Absolutely. and they're both, they're both velvet hammers. They both can yeah, tell somebody. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. know, they oh, can yeah. tell somebody something. Yeah, I get something, nervous now when I go in Jill's <laughs> office. So. You can go into Jill. And, and talk to her, and it's so sweet. And then you come out, you don't realize it. You know, you've been like ripped all up. No, not really. No, not no, really. No. But no, you, you do a great. It, it's a Christian. It really is. I mean, it's done in a Christian way. But yes. that's the way we should be. It should be straightforward with people. But that's why Molly Sue. I mean, honestly, the hundreds and hundreds of workers over the years. Oh, yeah. I don't know anybody that didn't like her. You respected her. That's you true. might not like some of the decisions you made, but you couldn't help but love her. That's right. right. And you had to respect her. That's right. Even if she had to let somebody go, they knew they needed mm -hmm. to, you know, they, yeah. they needed to be. Incredible woman of God. So you and Molly became very close. And we did. Great friends and love each other. We did. Yeah. We did. And yeah. I'm so thankful for that yeah. because I got to know her and, you yeah. know, we talk like, Shelly and I talk about clothes and all that hair. And all that. <laughs> um, so, no, it was, it was a girl thing. And, you know, we just yeah. did our girl thing. And that was just mm -hmm. such a blessing, such a blessing. You know, Molly was such a planner when we would go on vacation. <laughs> yes. Or she'd have, and, and she'd say, now it doesn't have to be this way, but I just don't want us to waste time while we're here. Mm -hmm. Well, and then <laughs> she, <laughs> she had that. it all planned out too. She said, <laughs> Let's face it, I'm going to outlive Hal and you're going to outlive JD. So she said, We're going to retire together. She said, wow. We're going to grow old together. Wow. And I mean, she was still saying that even up to six months ago, you know. Mm -hmm. that, and uh, it's, it was fun to be with her because Molly didn't, she didn't waste any time. No, mm -hmm. Molly didn't. wasn't a person. Made, to... made the most of it. Yeah. We only have a few minutes, I can't believe. Maybe you have a few comments from viewers or something. We, Can we do. Maybe do a few of those. Yeah, thank you. No, we do because uh, just after she passed, you know, we put something on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you for that. And we put something up just uh, quickly. And from that role that we did and put up on social media, wow talk about tens of thousands of you mm -hmm. and we just have a, a selection of just some of the comments that have come through what Molly's meant to you and I think only yes. in eternity we will realize the full impact mm -hmm. that Molly had and I'm thinking about just that decision of them heading back to Florida tears running down their cheeks mm -hmm. we need to it's stay certain. here that decision what that would do mm -hmm. for the world yeah. because it was in the ministry there but then they came to 3ABN yes. and you mm -hmm. think about that uh, I've just got a few. You've got some, too. We're just going to go through some of these briefly. This is from Christine. She says, My condolences to the entire 3 Abian family. May Molly rest in peace. Stay strong. This is from Estherlita. As sincere condolences, this news has brought me deep sadness, but comforted at the thought that, that um, well, then they say some more than they say, um, I pray that her life continues to witness to the world and that it is continuing mm -hmm. to do. One more. It says, My deepest sympathy. This is from Sheila. And to the family and also to my brothers and sisters at 3ABN, I watch and listen to her all the time. I love to hear her preach the word of God. Mm. 
She will be greatly missed. Looking forward to the great resurrection day when Jesus shall call his children to their reward. I love you all. Can I say something? Do you remember yeah. on the Sabbath school panel? We're sitting there doing a Sabbath school panel and she's teaching along and then all of a sudden she looks up and she says, you're pruned if you do and you're pruned if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's had a like her. Yeah. Yeah. That's so all of her Mollyisms. You know, yeah. I think about what Molly meant to us here at 3ABM, which mm. is incredible. And you saw her as a sister and I saw her as a mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you at home see her as part of the family. It's part of the yeah. family. And that's the beautiful thing that mm -hmm. we mourn her loss here, but I know that Maybe she has too. impacted your life at home as well. Mm -hmm. This is from Australia. I'm so sorry to hear about Molly and I wish I could have met her, but I watched her via satellite from Australia and I'm going to see her in heaven. Mm -hmm. This one is, I recently learned of Molly's death and I'm so sorry. I'm on behalf of our entire ministry. I want to leave these words with you. Our heart and prayers are with you. This is from Canada. And one more, this one was from Iowa. If I can find it, well, no, this one says our sincere condolences on the passing of Molly Steenson. She's dear to our hearts, and I'm sure you all are missing her greatly. That's from California. So we've heard from oh. all around the world yeah. the impact that Molly has made and the people who have chosen to accept Jesus as a result of what yeah. she's done. Mm -hmm. I just think of all the stars in her crown mm -hmm. because she was faithful. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Molly's favorite scripture, I guess, because she used it in every program we did, I think was uh, John 1, 9, that yeah. if you confess your sins, right. he First is John. faithful. First John, did I say John? First John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your Amen. sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So turn to him today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was a woman of principle because I saw it in, in the actions, whether it's the board meetings, she always made not based on her feelings. That's true. Right. Um, working with employees is not who liked you and who didn't like you and who you liked and who she she was a straightforward, this is a principle, this is the decision. I love you. She'd say, I love you to death, but you know, you can't do this, you can't you you whatever. And so that to me was so strong. I knew yeah. when I was yeah. gone or whatever and decisions were gonna be made. She wasn't just going to make them because, oh, well, she's having a bad day or a good day. It's always the same. Amen. This is what the Lord would have us do. This is what we're going to stand up and do. Uh, when there was a gray line, there was no gray line to her. No. It's either <laughs> black or white. We're going to do, it's either right or it's either wrong. Yeah. Let's find out which one it is. Amen. We got to pray about it. We'll do it. Sometimes she'd say, if we have to pray about it, let's pray about it, but we ought to know. You know? <laughs> so, so yeah, no, we love her. It's a great, <laughs> uh, incredible loss. Um, Molly, yeah. she's an incredible loss. We could do hours and hours of programs, and those of you that know her, you could spend hours and hours also just talking about Molly. Now, I know a lot of times we do this when somebody's gone. I'm so thankful that we did, Greg. You all had us do the video Before. first and give it to her so she could watch it and see it, and, and she was so appreciative of it too. And uh, last time we talked to her, she said, she said, and literally it was a very short time after that, she just had, she said, my, my, my friend or my brother or something like that, my oh, sister, yeah. Yvonne and I, and it was a kind of a goodbye. Yep. Yeah. And it was like, you know, oh, my brother, my sister, you know, I love you so much. We're going to have to take a, go to the news break, take a short break, and we'll be back for a closing thought. We just have a minute or so left. I wonder, Greg, could you say a prayer for Brother Hal, for oh, Dee Dee and Jeremy and the grandkids mm -hmm. and her sisters and and brother, the family, that yes. God would give them a mm. peace in the midst of the storm. Oh, I'd be honored to, okay. yes. All right, thank you. Father in heaven, uh, wow, this world is full of sadness and sickness and death. Mm -hmm. But Lord, we look forward to your soon return. Yes. And the Lord, we know that it is so very soon. We just pray for the family of uh, Miss Molly, Lord Pastor Hal and her children and brothers and sisters and grandchildren. Be with them, wrap your arms of comfort thank and love you, around God. them. Yes. Lord, I think of uh, Revelation. We talk about um, what a blessing that uh, those that die in you, Lord, that their works uh, do follow them. And I know that Molly's works do follow her. Thank you. And that people are continuing to be impacted by the work that she has done. Yes. We thank you and we love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, it, it, very soon, literally very soon, Molly will hear the voice That's wow. right. of the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah. Whether, yes. we're, whether we're here Lord. on this side wow. or whether we're resting, 
but mm. she will be one of those that will look up. I'm confident and say, Lord, this is my God That's whom right. I've waited for. You've come to save me. Praise the Lord. And it's our prayer for each and every one of you today, not only for ourselves, but each and every one of you that you really submit and commit your life to Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way out yes. of this world today, the only answer to this world's problems. Amen. Our time is all gone. Until we see you next time, may the Lord richly bless you abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. Amen.